Here's Hollywood. Brought to you by the makers of Less Toil, the original all-purpose liquid detergent with twice the cleaning power. Less Toil cleans everything easier, faster, better. O'Connell, and here's Hollywood. I'm heading toward the unusual Brentwood home of Don DeFore, as good a family man off the screen as he is on. The father of five children, Don feels large families are the happiest families. He himself was one of seven children. Son of a railroad engineer, Don hails from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. A three-letter man in high school, he enrolled at Iowa University, ostensibly to study law, but his real ambition was to act, and he won a three-year scholarship to the Pasadena Playhouse. Don's affable manner made him a natural for roles as the nice guy next door. For five years, he was Thorny, the neighbor on the Ozzie and Harriet show. Today, he is the bemused and always frustrated employer of Hazel, television's irascible maid. We'll join Don, the family man, right after this message. Less Toil, the perfected spray starch. Ironing may not be quite this easy, but with Less Toil's instant spray starch, it is far less work. So easy and quick. Won't scorch, won't stick. With Less Toil's Instant Spray Starch, you starch only the parts you want and get far better results. So easy and quick. Won't scorch, won't stick. Try Less Toil's Instant Spray Starch, another convenience product from the Less Toil Laboratories. Cleaning problems, cleaning problems. Real cleaning problems need real cleaning power. Only Less Toil has it with twice the active cleaning ingredients of any other leading all-purpose liquid detergent, Less Toil cleans everything faster, easier, better. Try original Pine Scent Less Toil with twice the cleaning power. It's so easy when you use Less Toil. I'm in Brentwood today with one of the happiest families in Hollywood, Don DeFore and his wife, Marion and their children, and they're watching TV. Do you think we could interrupt them for a moment? I, I think, think we can. Would they forgive us if we did that? <laughs> uh, we'll take a chance. Uh, let's see. Right the way you're seated, this is David, Sorry. this is Ronnie, and Dawn, and Penny, and little Amy, right? Mm -hmm. What do you like most in school, David? Well, I'm taking geometry and algebra. I like that. And taking band. Mm -hmm. Enjoy band. Mm -hmm. Play the drums. How about you, Ronnie? Oh, I like Spanish and arithmetic most. And recess? <laughs> Dawn? I like English journalism. I'm taking that and Spanish. They're not at all alike, are they? No. <laughs> all different. I know little Amy uh, goes to nursery school now. And Penny, I know you've just come back not too long ago from Korea, where you were working with some of the Korean orphans. And I want to hear more about your trip and your experiences there. But first of all, Mom and Dad said they'd give us a grand tour of the house. Can we do that? I love yeah. it. It really is such a beautiful room. The whole house, as a matter of fact. <laughs> This painting in particular I admire. Can you tell us well, about yes. that? Well, yes. First of all, of course, as you can see, our decor is uh, early American. And uh, really, um, our proudest joy is this painting that Don gave us for Christmas. It's by Walter Keene. And uh, we just love his paintings with big, sad eyes on the children. He certainly mm -hmm. has. We just love eyes. it. Who designed the house? Uh, Don Ayers out in the valley, but actually Marion and I had sketched pretty much what we wanted. That was 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah. my goodness. There's something else I admire as I came in. Can you tell us about this? I have to call it this. I don't exactly know what it is. Well, that is, is a bit of sculpturing in clay done by the very fine artist at the, at the uh, farmer's market, Lowell Grant. Oh. It was taken from a, an 8 by 10 photo of Penny when she was in Korea with the little Korean orphans. How marvelous. Can we go into the den, do you think? Mm -hmm. right. Helen, I'd like to show you our den. And as you see, it's uh, done in a railroad motif. It certainly is. Almost makes you want to travel, mm -hmm. which we'd like to do. So in keeping with this railroad motif, Helen, which was, uh, the idea was taken from the fact that my father was a locomotive engineer. Yes. Steam uh, and locomotive, that is. So I made this cocktail table from three old beaten up railroad ties. Oh, lots of our viewers will get ideas from that, I'm sure. And uh, then this rug Marion gave to me as a gift uh, one time, and it shows the last uh, train that my uh, dad drove. And that's his uh, engine number, 2103, last engine he 
girl. That's wonderful. You know, you two have been married 20 years. Now, sometimes people forget, you know, this does happen in Hollywood. Uh, can you tell us the secret of this long, happy marriage? Well, maybe um, you can elaborate on that. Well, I, I think basically that uh, uh, two people have to be in love. And I think one, one big factor, I think, is that Don doesn't bring his work home. He comes home, same sweet guy as when he left in the morning. Doesn't bring his character home. Oh, I'm going to remember that. <laughs> Isn't that his character? Oh, I know. He is <laughs> character. A house like this must have a wonderful warm kitchen. Could we see that? Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. I'd love to show it to you. That sometimes is the best room in the house after all, isn't it? You oh, see, it it's, is uh, pretty. It's uh, also in the farm motif. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I want to tell you that this large hand-hewn table uh, it is our dining room, too. We have a dining room in there, but we never actually got a dining room set. We use it as a uh, kind of a playroom, pickup room, but we use, uh, we here, eat here in a big... Uh, big family kitchen. The kitchen like this is always cozier if you have one of this type. And outside, oh my goodness, lots of room to play and I can see you use it too, don't you? Sweet you certainly do. That's the beauty of it, I think. You've got something like that to really in enjoy it. Well, I had been determined, I determined to myself uh, years ago that uh, when we'd have children, I wanted to, be sh wanted to be sure that we had enough room for them to run around. Uh -huh. Where did mean, you two meet? I met in Chicago. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, in Chicago, but uh, I was playing, uh, playing the male animal on Broadway and was dating the understudy. And the other understudy didn't go on tour with us. It was our first stop in Chicago, but she kept saying, now be sure when you get to Chicago, look up my girlfriend at the Bismarck Hotel and say hello. And uh, I did say hello, and as I say, refer to it, it's being the longest hello on record. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, give us a tip. What methods do you use to keep little minor difficulties from boiling into major crises or catastrophes? Well, I think we try to lead um, a normal life. It sometimes is kind of difficult in this uh, business, but we try to do things with our children and take vacations with them, fishing, teaching them to fish. Mm -hmm. And uh, we take vacations alone sometimes. I made a deal a long time ago. I said, uh, here's what we'll do. We'll rig the fights. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you win one and uh, I'll win two. <laughs> well, how do you keep the romance in, in a marriage after 20 years, Don? Well, uh, you must realize we have five kids now to help. And uh, I think it blends into, uh, mellows down into something, uh, well, a lot deeper than just, say, romance. It's... Uh, deep roots of... See, he loves me. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, we should pause right <laughs> there. <pushing> <laughs> but we'll be back again with the divorce right after this message. The rise and fall of the Third Reich, $10 bestseller, has now been condensed into three installments in the Reader's Digest. The first was last month. Now, in the April Digest, the second installment, Hitler on the March. This is a masterful telling of a gripping drama. The story of a man, a nation of the world, gone mad. The author observed at first hand the pack of warped fanatics around Hitler, Goebbels, Goering, and others who joined in the lying, double dealing, and terrorism. Captured Nazi documents reveal the secret decisions and intrigues behind the scenes of the Nazi movement. You'll read two of Hitler's early youth, his obscure private passions, and his brawling rise to the mastery of the German nation. Get your copy of the April issue early. Last month, hundreds of newsstands sold out during the first 10 days of sale. Get your April issue now. We're back in Brentwood, in the lovely home in Brentwood, with uh, Marion and Don DeFore visiting and having a little bit of coffee. Uh, Don, how do these luscious surroundings compare with your surroundings when you were a child? Well, I grew up with a, uh, in a family of uh, seven children in the Midwest, uh, a, a middle-class family. The home was small, and uh, I had always uh, vowed that uh, when I got married, I would want to have enough land for my children to run around and uh, grow up in. So it's a little this different. This is much more, uh, uh, say, a larger uh, establishment, but I think that the uh, we try to keep a feeling of uh, livability and... Uh, Omen, omen is to it. And that you have. 
You know, you might well afford, I presume, to send your children to private schools, and yet you uh, sort of insist on having them go to public schools. Why is that? Well, Mary and I both uh, decided uh, very early against that. You know, children growing up in this world that we live in eventually have to bump, bump into problems. And, of course, our world is made up of many, many types of people. And I don't see why children should not start in the early age and, and meet these problems and meet other people and see how other people have lived and, and bump into other people's problems. Mm -hmm. This is what made us decide to have them go to our own public schools. Are they impressed by the fact that you're a famous actor? Well, why don't you answer that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. That's hard to say because we don't know what they say when, when they're away from home. But I remember one time when one of the children was little and uh, came home one day and took a look at Don and said, Daddy, are you Don DeFore? <laughs> So suddenly, she must have realized her daddy was something. He stuck out his chest and said, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Marion, in what ways uh, has your job as wife and mother differed uh, from the average housewife, in, you know, due to the fact that you're married to an actor? Well, yes, I think it is uh, a little different. Uh, it's, it's hard to live um, a normal life when you're, you're in show business, but we have, we have tried to. Uh, naturally, your, uh, your demands of uh, parties at night and uh, uh, publicity um, things that you have to do uh, yes. and getting your family in to do those when they want to be out doing something else, yes. it, it's a little different. But I think we really have lived a very normal life for someone in this business. How about allowances with your children? Uh, is there a limit to, to the amount, yeah. I would assume? Yeah. And uh, do you tell them how to spend the money? Well, Try no, it. you know, <laughs> they, do, they do a pretty good job on that. They have, they have their duties here at home to do for their allowances, uh, taking the papers out and um, clearing the dishes at night and rinsing the dishes and stacking them. And uh, odd jobs around. Don has them working a lot out in the yard and in the garage. He likes to teach the boys to work with tools. They have to earn their allowance. Yes, how, they how do. else do they earn money if well, they do? Well, they have worked uh, out at, at our the restaurant. restaurant. The oh, four older children have all worked out at the restaurant. Doing what? Well, David has worked in the kitchen, washing well, pots the, and the, pans. Yes, <laughs> the wonderful thing about David was that a couple of summers ago, he started as a busboy. Oh, he was dying to work, and so. Uh, uh, he worked the first summer as a busboy, and then the second season he worked as a busboy too, but oh, he, he was just dying to get into the kitchen. And that day, the third summer, when we let him in to come in to be the pot boy, you thought we had given him a million dollars. <laughs> Isn't that marvelous? I really loved it. But we teach them, we've, I think it's been a great experience for them because they've had to work hard and earn it, and they know where that green stuff comes from, and they know what they had, how hard it was to earn when they spent it. This is terribly <laughs> important. Uh, we have to pause for a moment, and then we want to come back and talk about Penny, your oldest daughter, who has learned to share her good fortune with others. Uh, she went to Korea to work with uh, war orphans, and we'll do that right after this message. News that can literally change your life overnight may happen anywhere, anytime. Whenever it happens, you want the story right away. That's why NBC has pioneered in scheduling regular television news reports throughout the day. Beginning at breakfast time on the Today Show with John Chancellor and Frank Blair. Then every weekday afternoon, Ray Scherer from Washington, Floyd Calver from Chicago, and Sander Van Oker from Washington. And of course, every weekday evening, the Huntley Brinkley Report. Covering the day's events on TV's most highly acclaimed news program, Chet Huntley and David Brinkley. Yes, news happens throughout the day, and the NBC television network is first in scheduling regular reports throughout the day. Another reason more people watch the news on NBC than on any other network. Here's Hollywood. I'm on my way to the backyard of the charming Brentwood home of actor Don DeFore. Happily married for 20 years, he is the father of five children. Don has taught his family that sharing their good fortune with others has its own rewards. 
His eldest daughter, 19-year-old Penny, took Don's lesson to heart. She gave up the comforts of her home to go to Korea and work with orphans. We'll be talking with Penny about her experiences there right after this message. Mother, when congestion of colds and coughs makes children miserable, two hands just don't seem enough. Nose drops, chest rubs, medications used with electric vaporizers involve so much fuss. To help you, science has concentrated six medications to fight colds congestion into a new push-button vaporizer called Congestaid. With Congestaid, you feel instant relief from colds congestion and coughing is eased. Children never resist treatment with soothing Congestaid. It fills the air with medication. With each breath, Congestaid's medicated vapor helps decongest nose, throat, and bronchial tubes penetrates deeper than any nose drops, faster than any chest rub. Natural breathing comes easier. With Congestaid, you can help relieve night coughs without awakening children. Children breathe in medication and coughing subsides. Congestaid gives mother and dad fast relief from stuffed up nose and coughing too. Get new Congestaid for the whole family. Feel instant relief. I'm back with actor Don DeFore and his fascinating, beautiful, early American home in Brentwood. And we've moved out into the backyard into the sunshine. And with us is his oldest daughter, Penny, who has just returned to this country after almost a year of working with orphans in Korea. Uh, Penny, would, when did you first decide that you wanted to go to Korea? Um, it was when I was 13, and Dad was making the movie Battle Hymn at Universal International Studios. And uh, he brought me down to the studio, and I met Mrs. Wong, the directress of the orphanage, and I met 25 of the orphans. And uh, just seeing the children there just did something to me, and I just fell in love with them, and I knew that when I graduated from high school that this is what I wanted to do. And you, you just never let go of that dream? No. What was the first thing you did towards making your dream into a reality? Um, the first thing I did was to um, go to work in the restaurant, Dad's restaurant at Disneyland, and I earned money and uh, doing various jobs, modeling and um, work with the crippled children here in Los Angeles. I earned money and I sent uh, the orphanage a check for $600. Wow. That was just before she went there, a few months before, well, about six months before yeah. she went there. That's quite a nice big check. <laughs> Don, how did you and, and uh, your wife Marion feel about Penny going off to such a distant land? Well, you can imagine uh, uh, the anxieties and the fears we had. We never really realized until it came upon us that she was really that serious. Uh -huh. Then when we realized she was and she had definitely planned to go, well, then we had to shore up all these fears and anxieties. And then we wrote to uh, the State Department and, and m many families that we knew were in Korea. And so we were able to at least have people there watching over. But I'm telling you, it was a tremendous decision to make. And all we kept saying, we, uh, we talked to many uh, men of the cloth, uh, of various religions, uh -huh. and posed the problem to them. What would you do when someone would be so dedicated, have this dedication, and so sincere and earnest? Would, is it right to step on it, or is it right to encourage it and to do everything possible to uh, you know, shore up your anxieties and fears, as we did? So we made the decision. So then you did help her? Oh, well, yes. But yes. Penny, you earned your own money, I understand, for yes, your uh, I did. fair and, and did the whole thing yourself. Well, they helped me out, too, but um, I did work for the four years um, since I was 13 up till I was uh, 17. I worked. What, what feelings did you have, first of all, that prompted you to give up this luxury for the comparative hardships of Korea? Well, I think the main feeling was that I, I have everything that... Um, teenage girl could ever want of just a fantastic family wonderful home life yeah. just wonderful friends but I felt that I wanted to find the real meaning of life or to at least try out a basic way of life and I felt that these people over in Korea do have a basic way of life they don't have all the little added things that I have and I felt that this would make me even appreciate more what I have it's very very adult thinking, oh. I would say. What impressions did you bring back with you, Penny? Well, um, the culture is very different over there, and um, it is a very poverty-stricken country. However, the people are just as wonderful and warm and cordial as they can be, and I made wonderful friends over there, 
and the country itself I think is the most beautiful country I have ever been in as far as the uh, nature goes uh, in the summertime the greens and the different colors are just beautiful and I just love the country you make everyone want to see it what did you miss most about home though Oh, I think I miss the little things our family does together, the trips we go on and the, the laughs we have and the wonderful time we have during Christmas decorating the tree and singing Christmas carols. And, and my little sister, I think she did most of her growing up when I was away. <laughs> you noticed a big difference. <laughs> oh, I sure back. did. I In sure a did. sense, you were sort of your own one-woman Peace Corps. Penny, how do you feel about the idea of a Peace Corps? I think it's a very good idea. Um, However, I don't think that um, I wouldn't encourage um, students such as I was uh, just out of high school going over to any country, especially without having a, not well, the language is important, yes. but not as important as the cultural background and knowing um, the different ways of life of the people. And I think it's a good idea if they could meet, possibly if they were going to Japan or someplace in the Orient or Europe, meeting people from those countries who are here in the United States talking with them yes. and um, I, they have to be mature enough to withstand the cultural difference I think. Um, more preparation you mean? I uh, think a lot more preparation yes. You've really written a book or you're writing a book about your experiences there. When will it be published? Well we're hoping to finish it this September and they hope that the release date will be in 63. Isn't that be exciting? Oh My yes. Goodness, all the things you've done at your age. You're in college now. What, yes. what are you going to do when you graduate? What do you want to do? Well, um, I'm now taking nursing up at San Jose State, and um, I hope to uh, return to the Orient after three or four years of nursing, and possibly, if I can go back to Korea, I'd like to, or Japan, and I'd like to maybe do um, a couple more years of helping them over there. You've got lots of big plans. Yes. Don, you weren't uh, especially happy about Penny going in the first place, but now that she's had this experience, uh, how do you feel she benefited by it? Well, uh, <clears throat> naturally, uh, that it's all over. It was, uh, <laughs> I'm very happy that uh, we allowed this to happen. As I say, uh, uh, Marion and I uh, grew in age quite a bit uh, with this little study program, too. <laughs> a few gray but, hairs. Uh, it's, it's been a tremendous thing, and uh, I do know that uh, uh, Penny has uh, a boyfriend that also, uh, she has been telling us, is going to fit into the plans on the Oriental oh, thing somewhere. she didn't tell me that. <laughs> and uh, so all in all, I think that uh, it has had a tremendous ending, in a way, to this chapter. Yes. Well, we have to end our little chapter here right now. It's been such a pleasure to visit you and your family in oh, your home. Thank you Oh, boy, so your dreams much. come true, Penny. Thank you. I'll be back right after this message. For 49 years, Camp Fire has helped girls grow into womanhood. When Camp Fire girls grow up, they carry along a treasure of memories. I light the light of work. Ohilo means work. High ideals, pride in being a girl, love of home and family, deep love of country, good health habits. I light the light of health. Wohilo means health. Love of the out of doors and a happy heart to help them find beauty, romance, and adventure in the common things of daily life. I light the light of love. Wohilo means love. Help the Campfire Girls reach more girls. Well, that's Here's Hollywood for today. Tomorrow, Jack Linkletter will be meeting one of the stars of the Rawhide series, Clint Eastwood. And I'll be meeting Heather Angel, who, after 14 years of retirement, is resuming her acting career. This is Helen O'Connell saying, see you then. See the Dinah Shore Show in Color Friday at 9.30, 8.30 Central Time.